Welcome back to F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. We're going to continue on into the last chapter, chapter nine. And as usual, I like to usually start off with one of the more famous quotes from the story. Nick Carraway tells us, after Gatsby's death, the East was haunted for me like that, distorted beyond my eyes power of correction. So when the blue smoke of brittle leaves was in the air and the wind blew the wet laundry stiff on the line, I decided to come back home. Well, in chapter 9, Tom and Daisy have left without telling anyone where they're going. After all, Daisy has killed somebody, but we need to protect her, so Tom and Daisy have left. Henry Gatz shows up for his son's funeral, and we're happy he does because almost nobody comes. Nick learns that Gatsby's always been a determined young man. Uh, we actually get a book in which he has written in the corners and in the front different things that he has set goals for. Nick quickly and quietly ends his relationship with Jordan. She seems to be careless enough to not even care. Nick decides that he doesn't want to live in the East anymore. He believes that he and all of the others were just not fit to live out in the East, and that's why they failed there. And the poor attendance at Gatsby's funeral exemplifies the ultimate failure of Gatsby to ever achieve what he wanted. The woman he loved, the woman that he'd been going for all this time, was not present. In fact, she was off with her husband. None of the people who frequented the parties over the summer even bothered to show up, except for our friend Owl Eyes. Wolfsheim, one of the few people who could be called a close friend of Gatsby, refuses to attend. They worked so hard together. Wolfsheim's close to him, and he refuses to come. Now, this can all be tied into the final quote about trying to grasp for that green light. The more Gatsby tried to obtain, the less he ended up with. And like the green light, it receded before him, no matter how badly he wanted all of it. So let's take a look once again at our themes, the sense of carelessness. As we're talking to Jordan Baker, we relate Tom and Daisy are careless people. They escape in the end of the book. They won't be bothered by the suffering they cause because they can use their money to escape. The emptiness of people, the contrast of the hundreds of people that would come to his parties, and then when Jay Gatsby has a funeral, there's only three people there. The hypocrisy. Tom is saddened by the loss of Myrtle, but he wholeheartedly helped to send George Wilson off to murder Gatsby. The sense of pride that Henry Gatz has in his son sees him as Jimmy, the all-American boy who could do no wrong. He was determined he'd make a, himself a success. And the shallowness. Gatsby's smile is a social weapon. Anytime that Nick still imagines Gatsby, he sees that sense of shallowness. There's no meaning. So we have a lot of symbolism at the end of the story. The rain at the funeral is just the absolute end of a dream. The autumn setting as a chill and cold come in, the end is near. As we look into the book and look at Gatsby's schedule, we see this sense of ambition, of hard work, that rags to riches, if you pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you'll be a success. This thirst for adventure, wanting to go somewhere other than being just stuck as a farmer in North Dakota. Of course, it also goes along with Gatsby's idealism, this absolute embodiment uh, of spiritual I dreams instead of the desolation and waste that it ends up being. And we have Nick, our hope for moral and spiritual growth, the traditional moral codes of America. He feels so disgusted out east with everything he's been through. He feels he needs to go back home to remember what his moral values are. And of course, Tom is the absolute representation of a moral wasteland. And unfortunately, he wins in the end. It seems to replace American idealism. Well, that was a quick short end to the G G uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. I'm going to go, go ahead and do a conclusion uh, one for you guys. So if you want to stay on my playlist, we'll work our way through what's important in the story. If you haven't missed, if you've missed the first eight chapters, please go back to my playlist and go check those out. And by all means, if you'd like to hear another story from me, put down in the comments which stories you'd like to hear more about. Thanks for stopping by.